Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the study this morning. Before we open God's word, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the time that we have this morning to study together. We invite your spirit to speak to us, to teach us, and to help us to see things in your word that address our present situation. We need you um, in so many ways with all the different um, voices clamoring for attention. So much information in this world today. But we need to have your truth, your word speaking to us. We ask that we can have strength to face these battles each day, the battle with self. And um, we pray, Lord, that as we study the book of Judges, that you can give us light to help this movement at this time. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning. Um, so over the last uh, last few weeks, we've been uh, working on uh, getting the lines in the judges um, drawing them out as we would in a reform line. So having the, the seven way marks that we have of a reform line. And um, presently we're working on the line of Jotham. So this is, of course, with the first king, though not officially a king, Abimelech, who is an illegitimate son of Gideon. And... Um, and then we have Jotham, who is the 70th son, who survived the slaughter of his 69 brothers. And his parable uh, regarding Abimelech, and then the results of that. So what we are presently looking at is the downfall of Abimelech. So we know that Jotham gives this parable. He flees to Beer, and he dwells there for the fear of his brother Abimelech. And then Abimelech reigned three years. So the way that we are looking at these lines, so I know we're just kind of jumping into it here, but uh, we have this line, which we call Jotham's line. And what I've done is I've placed these years at the bottom. So these, basically it's, it's all of 2013. Right. starting on December 21st, 2012. So we're going to start the year there with this 77 days. Um, so these have to do with my presentations and the movement. But I, I present at a major camp meeting in 2013, 2014, 2015. I present in Alberta. This one's Arkansas. This one's Alberta. So it goes Alberta, Arkansas, Alberta, Arkansas. This is... Um, uh, in Arkansas at Lambert, and then 2018, that's going to be October 13th, and then 2019 at the School of the Prophets. So, so this is uh, at Lambert, sort of, in that I do the calculation at Lambert Church, but then I present at the camp meeting, uh, which happens a few days after that. And then in 2019, I present uh, the 273 in connection with the Mayan calendar. And uh, that eventually is going to show us that our prediction is in a line of failed predictions, which helps us to understand the significance of our lines. Now, I have here then uh, uh, this other line. So to me, this first line, Jotham's line, is like Stephen, or Stephen, uh, <clears throat> who in 34 AD on the 10th day of the seventh month rehearses the history of Israel. And, and this is really what Jotham is doing with his parable. He's rehearsing the history of the judges up to that point. And so this next line, which I have here is this 777 days, this line, if we're doing this correctly, 
would go from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. And, and this would be the downfall of Abimelech. So if we were going to give this a name, and I, I still uh, not sure exactly how, how this is done, how this is going to work out, because I haven't looked at it yet. But uh, we would take this, just copy this. This is Abimelech's downfall. So that's what this line is going to be. <clears throat> so if we're going to um, deal with Abimelech's downfall, this is the period of three years. So we can go from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. We can see that's a period of three years. Right? if we do an inclusive count. So, so we have the date in 2019, the main dates. And so we, we would just put those dates that we've always been using. This would be November 9th, 2019. This would be July 18th. That's the second angel's message. And then this would be December 25th, 2021. So it doesn't look any different than the other lines we did with Gideon. In a sense, it covers the same history, but it's now in the symbol of Abimelech's downfall. So if we are going to compare Abimelech to Gideon, we would see that Gideon is the message um, that is being proclaimed in connection with July 18th. And Abimelech is the message that is really opposing Gideon's message. So even though... Abimelech is the son of Gideon, and he's not really a contemporary in that sense. We can still take his line and place it over our line. And why are we justified doing that? Why, why can we do this? Why can we look at Abimelech or even any of these other judges and have them cover the same history? What's the principle? Because we're looking at a way mark in the judge's line, which we call Jotham. And Jotham can cover the same history as Gideon or the same history as uh, Deborah and Barak. But why, why can we do this? Are you referring to repeat and enlarge? Okay, so repeat and enlarge which it's, it's a, a part of repeat and enlarge because it's zooming into a way mark. Now, Rand says internal and external, but also just the simple principle that every way mark is a reform line and every reform line illustrates the same history when it's applied to our time, right? So we, we're just doing line upon line. So there's never a problem uh, looking at a line and applying that line to our history. Right? So we can do this with any line. Any line is going to give us light regarding our time because the events of the past um, tell us about the events of the present. So there's many different ways these lines could be applied. Right. So when we when we say that, you know, Joth Jotham's line is this and we're placing it, you know, from 2013 to 2019, we're not saying that that's the only way that Jotham's line can be applied. But what we know is that we can apply it based upon how we've been applying judges. We can see that all of these different judges 
um, are covering the same the same history if we apply them to our time. They're going to give us the same information. So Angela asks a question. Um, can we then say that Jotham and Stephen's summation of history of God's people relate to the investigative judgment and the ultimate purging of sin and close of probation and the subsequent analysis of the deeds of the wicked and their extinction after the thousand years are complete? So, well, yes, right? So we know that every history illustrates the end of the world. Every close of probation is illustrating the events that happen at the end of the world. Now, the other thing we need to remember is that our line is a typical line. That is, our line is typifying something that's still going to happen. So even though things are happening in our line, the reason we're looking at them is because we want to know what's happening in the future. And the events of the present illustrate the events of the future. And this has been part of the problem that this movement has had in understanding November 9th, July 18th, December 25th, 2021, and how we applied them. When we applied them the way that we did, we didn't know that they were typical of something. Though we should have, we just didn't. But after the failure of the July 18, 2020 prediction, we had to have known that our lines were typical, that they weren't the actual things. And we had in our, our line the pandemic, which is a type of the Sunday law, and we agreed it was a type, but yet we were acting as if it was the Sunday law, that it, that it, it was just going to slide into that Sunday law, merge into it, and that the issues of the pandemic were going to be uh, continuing into the Sunday law which made no sense because the Sunday law is not about the pandemic. The Sunday law is about the Sunday. And what we were supposed to learn, what we need still need to learn about our lines is that um, it's illustrating, it is preparing for the Sunday law, but it's illustrating um, the reaction of the church because how did the church relate to the, to the pandemic? And, and the actions of the government, they supported the actions of the government. So when it comes to the Sunday, how will the church act? It will support the actions of the government, right? So the church is going to bow to the Sunday law. And we can see that illustrated in the pandemic. And we've seen this illustrated in other times in history in Adventism as well. Then we also have, um, in any reform line, we have this development and uh, demonstration of the two classes of worshipers, right? So we have illustrated the foolish and the wise, the wheat and the tares, all these different types of things are illustrated in a reform line. And we also have a close of probation. So this movement has been tested since November 9th, 2019. And uh, we were tested first. We had the November 9th, that history. And as we, we had that, that history, we had, of course, November 9th, 2019, and how the church or how the movement reacted to uh, the light that was coming to it. So many people in the movement rejected that first message. And... So when November 9th, 2019 arrived, we saw that the vast majority of the movement had left us. And then we had this, this message of July 18th. Um, so we have this close of probation at, at, at November 9th, and that's gonna be illustrated in Jotham's line. So you have this history, and then you have November 9th arrive, and now you have this, this message, this first message of November 9th. And during November 9th, we're proclaiming July 18th, right? So the first message in Abimelech's downfall, if this is illustrating Abimelech's downfall, is the message of July 18th in connection with the message to the Levites. 
So after July 18th, we see, again, the majority of the movement leaving us after July 18th. Right? So we have now way less people than we had. We thought we had 300, um, you know, was connected with the story of Gideon. But, but we have less than we had even before because FFA is going to. And, and if we're going to deal with a line, one of the things we, we, we look at in Millerite history is that you have a group that's being tested. And, and the group that's being tested here, I'm just going to copy this. Uh, what group is being tested from November 9th to July 18th? How would we categorize what this is that who's being tested once we get to November 9th and we have that period from November 9th to July 18th, who's being tested? Because it's within this movement. So who's being tested within this movement? Would you say the priests are being tested? No. Okay. No. Couldn't we just say FFA? That's a pretty wide range, but yeah. 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 Now, so FFA is being tested. Now, FFA is still going to sort of continue, but remember, Jeff said, if the prediction of July 18th succeeds or fails, it's still the end of FFA. So now we could say, and, it, and it's hard to say, well, Abimelech's downfall is because this is Abimelech what he is. I mean, he's this illegitimate son. Um, but he represents a message or a spirit. And FFA is being tested on this, right? So we have the parable of Jotham that has been presented to this movement. And, and so that's who's going to be tested here. At least that's my, the way that I would put it. But we know that after July 18th, we still have, FFA still exists. But we, we have to distinguish who's being tested in this second part. And... So this, this may not really make much sense to people, but maybe it will. Um, so I'll put it as the remnant of FFA. Oh, I can't spell it. Now, does that make sense? How can I make a distinguish from a, a distinction between FFA and the remnant of FFA? Because the separation had occurred within FFA. Okay. Yeah. So. You know, and in some ways, we could even look at that, that whole history um, of Jotham's parable. I mean, there's other ways to, to look at this history. Um, because Jotham's line, this period of time, if we went from December 21st, 2012 to November 9th, 2019, um, you know, we don't have 2020 in this line the way that I've drawn it out though it, it sort of is inclu included in the sense that once you get to 2019, that this Abimelech's downfall is a zoom into that history. So, so it, it sort of precedes this, you know, this is the history precedes the November 9th. 
But in some ways, we're zooming into November 9th uh, with Abimelech's downfall. But it, it's going to continue from then. So you know, maybe that's not the best way to explain it. But, but FFA has been developing and growing this message through this history, this particular message uh, relating to time, right? So this is about time prophecies. And I need to get rid of this here because that doesn't make sense. Um, so, so part of the thing that we, that we have problems here in the way that we structured Jotham's line as compared to Abimelech's downfall is we have this period of darkness. So, so even in this history, we know that there is a, just as in any of these lines, we can, we can have two groups being tested under each message. So we haven't really defined this yet. I still have lots of ideas floating around in my head that I don't, you know, we're going to have to get from the scripture itself. But the darkness here um, in this parable, so this is a parable rehearsing history. Uh, we have it illustrated as a reform line, at least these periods of seven years. But in some ways, it's also um, a period of darkness. But, but it starts with a period of darkness. And so the darkness there um, would relate to, uh, as we've said, it relates to Parminder's message. So Parminder has a message that's counteracting Jotham's. And so we would think, well, maybe we could say it's Abimelech, but, but it's not really, and, and it is, right? Because Abimelech's message is being... Um, set up in that period, right? So we dealt with the idea, you know, Parminder makes this prediction in 2012 regarding 2014, that there's going to be the Sunday law. And he introduces time, but he introduces time based upon a false premise. That is the basis for his idea of time is is dispensational but he doesn't tell us this in 2012 he doesn't tell us why we can set time he doesn't try to defend it at that point on that basis that i know of so he bides his time and he ends up back into the movement right in 2016 but during that that period we have life being unfolded to this movement regarding the prophetic periods. So when I come into this movement, I, I don't know anything about the 2520, you know, prior to hearing about it from this movement in 2010. I go to the Oklahoma camp meeting. I begin to study this. And um, in 2012, I'm presenting these lines, the prophetic mirror, and on October 5th, 2012, I, I'm doing presentations at uh, a weekend camp meeting we had. That's our Thanksgiving happened then. Um, and I'm presenting uh, Isaiah 28 and the principles of line upon line as presented in the spirit of prophecy. But I'm also showing people the prophetic mirror because this is sort of new how I presented it. And so I wasn't presenting it in my, my lectures. I was presenting it to the individuals. And so people in this movement in Alberta were seeing for the first time uh, the complete prophetic mirror, um, the 2,604 uh, years of the prophetic mirror and, and coming to understand how this all fit together. So, so that's going to happen on October 5th, 2012. And then 77 days later, we have December 21st, 2012. But remember, that date is the center of two dates that Jeff has. And the two dates that Jeff has is June 22nd, 2011 and June 22nd, 2014. 
So December 21st, 2012 is exactly the center date between those two dates. So um, in some ways, you know, we can take these two lines and we can put them together. That is, we could take Jotham's line and Abimelech's downfall, and we could just tie them together where this third angel arrives, this first angel arrives. So these two reform lines are seven years and 777 days. And um, so I, I just don't know how to explain this or how to even justify it, but I'm going to do this. So we're going to, I'm just going to put them in a continuous line. I know this is kind of makes it all. Maybe I should do this some other way. Here, I'll do this another way. Um, I'm just going to create a new page here. New slide. And I'm just going to copy one of these lines. So, so here we have this line, but I'm just going to get rid of a bunch of stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, sort of these lines. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But, um, I'm just going to change this all, make this whole line go right across. might have been easier to do on the whiteboard, but and... More of these, I think. Two more. Three more. Oops. Oops. Did that again? Let's do it this way. Okay, so we have all these different way marks now. And um, so we're going to take, here, I'll do it this way. So we got seven years. So we have seven years of famine, seven years of plenty, or the other way around, right? Seven years of plenty, seven years. We have Leah and Rachel. And we could take all of those way marks that we had here above. And we can place them in this line here at the beginning. So just... Here. Definitely easier on the whiteboard to do it quickly. Now, can we put something as back-to-back -back periods of seven years, I guess is the question. Can we do it this way? Let's 
doesn't really line up very well. Okay. Well, that's why I got too many here. People understand what I'm doing? It's taking a bit. It, it, it's going to take a bit to really make this clear. So keep going. Okay. So what we're doing is we're, we're lining up this first seven years. And we're going to call that the seven years of, of plenty. It's, you know, in that sense, right? So you're taking a period of, of time, right? Just like in the story of Leah and Rachel, we, we can have back-to-back -back periods of seven years, right? So this first period of seven years is seven years. The next period is going to be 777 days. So this way mark here, this seventh way mark, is November 9th, but it's also going to be the first way mark of this period of 777 days. Right, so now we can we can take this, we can take these way marks here and I'm gonna put them on top. So you're gonna have uh, seven way marks and I know this actually, um, so I gotta get rid of one of these. I've done it right the first time, so. So I can take these and mark these seven way marks. So you got each of these way marks just like above. You can just remember arrival of the second angel. So here we have uh, Jotham is rehearsing this history. So this is a period of seven years. Um, and, it, and it really starts on December 21st, 2021. Or 2012, pardon me, December 21st, 2012, right? But we're going to call it 2013 because that's going to be the start of that year. And then it's going to go all the way to November 9th, 2019. And then there's going to be 77 777 more days. And that's going to be Abimelech's downfall. So this is Jotham's line. And then we're going to have Abimelech's downfall. That's going to be here, right? So we're going to have, instead of these seven years, we're going to have the seven and seven, seven days. So what are we doing in doing this? What, what is it that we're, we're showing by putting these periods back to back? People understand what I'm asking here. What am I illustrating here? the applications of the first, second, and third angel's messages. Okay, but I'm, I'm creating a line that has two, two lines in it, right? Almost like two sticks. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'd apply the two sticks. 
because I see the two sticks as running parallel, not running one after the other. Because this line's not over top of it. That would be more like the two sticks, but they'd be two different groups. Because we see this in Leah and Rachel. We see this in the plenty and the famine. Where else do we see this? So remember, we have, when, in, when we dealt with Joseph, we dealt with this period of time that went from uh, Jacob anointing his 12 sons in 1731 BC, right? So we have the story of the plenty and the famine. We have the story of Leah and Rachel, all leading to that. And then we have this chiasm of 1,764 years um, on either side, right? So one goes from 1731 BC to 34 AD, right? Those are the 2520 periods, the 25 or 252 year periods, right? So... Over here, you see this on the right? It's probably zoomed way too far out. But we have these two back-to-backs, right? And this is illustrated as the plenty and the famine. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, we've covered that in the past. Right. So you can see we have the plenty. This is the seven... Seven times 252. You have a close of probation. And then it's followed by another seven times 252. This is a period of persecution. First, pagan Rome persecutes Christians for 504 years. And then papal Rome persecutes Christians for 1260 years. Right. So this is what I'm thinking is that we can take this history... And now this is the history of uh, literal and spiritual Israel, right? So this is literal Israel. And this is spiritual Israel. Correct? 34 is marking the probation for the Jewish nation. Literal Israel comes to an end with the stoning of Stephen. And then spiritual Israel now. Right. The Gentiles now receive the blessings and the curses. And then that's going to end in 1798. And then they're going to have a test. The Protestants are going to be tested. Right. And they're going to fail that test. And then the Millerites are going to be tested. And then from the Millerites comes the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And that's all of our history. But it's all preceded by this. So if we take this line and we line it up with what I have, uh, so this is my first slide. So now we go to the last slide. We now have the same thing, but it's, it's not seven times 252 years. It's going to be seven years for the first part. And it's not going to be seven times 252 years. It's going to be 777 days. And so this is going to then be, um, you know, July 18th and December 25th, 2021. So what? how does this help us in understanding our lines? I know that we're taking our time here, but if this is true, then that means December 25th, 2021 is illustrated by 1798. Right, because we're going to take that whole line, and we're going to we're going to say that that whole line now we can line up with this line, and so November 9th, two thousand nineteen, is the close of probation that happens with the stoning of Stephen. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. 
it may be logical. Okay. Which which means it would be reasonable. It, so th there's there's merit in this at this at this point. And but we can see that each of these are reform lines, and you can see this, of course, in in ancient Israel. They're going to have their reform lines. They have all their different waymarks. So now what we can do is we're saying that we can take uh, a reform line and we can put it back to back with another reform line. So this isn't line upon line here in that sense. It is, it's, it's different that it, it extends a line. Now we also, the other precedent for this is the 70 years from the captivity of Manasseh to the captivity of Daniel. And then the 70 years from the captivity of Daniel to Cyrus's decree, right? So you have a period of 140 years. Now here, we, again, we just have seven, seven, seven days, but that represents the seven years. We, we've understood this already. The relationship between the 70 weeks and 777, et cetera, correct? Yes. So this tells us something about our history that I don't think we've thought about. That is, if we think about this, that means December 25th, 2021, marked a history in which we now are going to have this, this history that we're in presently, right? So when we got to December 25th, 2021. What we haven't done is we haven't really started a reform line there. That is, if we think about this, you know, if we look at this first way, Mark, and we say this is Jacob anointing his 12 sons. And, and how, how do we do that? Well, how can we make December 21st, 2012, the start of 2013? How can we relate that to that history? ancient Israel. So we're going to put that as the start of ancient Israel, um, which we've discussed before. But I mean, it starts with Abraham leaving Haran, but particularly it leads to Jacob anointing his 12 sons. So technically, that's when the nation of Israel is ratified, so to speak. So we have Jeff here and FFA, because remember, we talked about FFA, those two dates, and they're symbolic of FFA. June 22nd becomes a symbol of FFA. And between those two FFA dates, the two June 22nd in 2011 and 2014, we have the start of this line, right? So this line is going to start December 21st, 2012. And it's going to continue to November 9th, 2019, or more specifically, November 15th, 2019. Because Jeff is going to extend that period of probation for seven days, right, from November 9th. So we're going to go all the way here to November 15th. So that's going to be 25, 20 days. So what is this illustrating then? This is going to be the period of plenty, right? Now, it's also the history of ancient Israel. So it's also the history of FFA, right? That application makes sense. 
Yeah. But when we get to 34 AD, we get to this point where, where the Christian church is now formed, right? With the stoning of Stephen, we have the Apostle Paul who is there, and now the gospel is going to go to the Gentiles. Right. Now, is there anything parallel to that that happens on November 15th, 2019? Connected with November 9th. So, of course, that last seven days. So that includes the 9th, the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Those are seven days. So what, what's the change that happens in the movement that we could parallel to what happened previously? So we know we have Parminder, right? So Parminder is, in a sense, he's the organized church, right? He's the Jewish nation in some ways. So probation closes for that group of people. But the Jews, when does their the execution of their close of probation occur? 70 AD. Yeah, so 70 AD. So there still is this period of time in which they're being tested, so to speak, right? Particularly Christians are be being tested, right? Correct. So Christians, are they in Jerusalem when it's destroyed? They're not supposed to be. Yeah, they're not. Not not a not one Christian was destroyed, excepting, of course, the the strange creature who uh, proclaimed the destruction of the city for three and a half years. Right, but he wouldn't be included in what El White's saying. Not that he's not a Christian. He's just she's not including him in that. All the Christians fled because of what Christ had said, and because of the warning of this strange creature. So people know that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. They're not going to be there. So can we say that there is this testing that's occurring from November 9th to July 18th? And that's, that's going to be this message that's unfolding. We'll call it a Bimelech's downfall here. It's illustrated in the Bimelech's downfall. Because we see this happening in the movement. Everything in Abimelech's downfall is occurring within the movement in that period, not just to July 18th, but even afterwards. This is, this is quite important, what, what we're looking at here, because this is telling us something that I don't think we've had illustrated yet. Because we can see then that there, during the period from November 9th to December 25th, 2021, we have something that parallels from 34 AD to 1798. If, if I'm interpreting this correctly. What, what are the implications? Because I want people to think this through. I don't want to tell you what I think. Well, the biggest implication would seem to be that we're coming to a close of probation. Okay. So, so we had a close. Yeah. So we have, well, we had a close of probation on connected with November 15th, 2019. Because Jeff extended it seven days. He said that was that period of time in which the people who, who were in, you know, following Parminder, they had seven days basically to repent. Now, he, he got that in part um, during the animals, the seven days that the animals are entering into the ark, right? And then that's followed by seven days after that closed door that... Um, Noah waits, right? So there's going to be seven days preceding the 10th day of the second month, as it says in Genesis, and then seven days following before the rains fall, right? 
So that's in part where he got it. I, I can't remember all of his other arguments, but he extended that period. So we get to November 9th, he, we got seven days. Okay. And so November 15th passes, that happens to be 25, 20 days from December 21st, 2012. Jeff's not aware of that, right? And, and then we have um, this period of time then, that that's going to bring us all the way to December 25th, 2021. At least that's, that's how I've looked at it. Now, if that's the case, the 777 days, well, you, you could just say 770, right? If you're going to go from November 15th. But we're, we're actually going November 9th to 15th. So we're including, we're starting that 777 days at November 9th. It's just an extension of probation. But then for the Jewish nation, they're going to have to wait till 70 AD, right? And, and the Christians are going to be tested. Can we parallel July 18th with the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD? So, so we're going to say that this period here is from 34 AD to 70 AD. I would think that your point is totally logical. Yeah. One of the things is we use the 10th day of the fifth month to give us July 18th, 2020. Right? Agreed. That's going to be Ezekiel. Ezekiel is how we first arrive at July 18th, 2020. Then we apply the symbols of... Um, from Revelation 9 to get the 26th day of the fourth month, which is July 18th, Gregorian. The first date we had was July 18th, Julian. So technically the first date I had was July 31st, Gregorian. But it was the biblical date, the 10th day of the fifth month, uh, that gave me July 18th, Julian. And then we had that symbol of July 18th, which I'd been studying, and then we applied it to the 26th day of the fourth month, and it also gave us July 18th. So we used Revelation. So we weren't starting with July 18th. We just wanted to see where we came to. So when we made the application that it's 180 years, that it's a 0.5 of 360, and it gave us 2020, we looked for the 26th day of the fourth month in 2020 and we found it was july 18th just like the 10th day of the fifth month was except two different calendars right so so we can say that july 18th is representative of the 10th day of the fifth month the destruction of jerusalem in 70 a.d and of course we were looking for the destruction of nashville right now nashville is connected with the south Right? Yes. Okay. And so is the temple. Judah is in the south. The northern kingdom had already been destroyed. The southern kingdom is what's destroyed in 586. And it then is restored. And it continues. And then in 70 AD, it's destroyed again. Right? but we can see how it's related to the South. So Nashville is related to the United States, a judgment upon the United States, modern Israel, right? Well, we would have a judgment upon the United States as modern Israel, but would that also mean a judgment or a probationary period on the corporate church. Yeah, but this is primarily we're relating it to our movement. Okay. Right? So when we look at our movement, these external events, these e external symbols represent something that's happening in our movement. So in our movement, we have Abimelech's downfall. Abimelech has been... made king, right? So we need to understand what that means particularly. So we're saying that Abimelech's downfall 
has to do, relate to this movement. I mean, there's lots of implications. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know if I want to say what I'm thinking about this, everything that I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> but if we say that Abimelech relates to this movement, but Abimelech has a history, that is, there is a history that precedes this, and Abimelech is made king in our movement, so we need to know what Abimelech represents, and that Abimelech has to be removed, right? He has to have a downfall. And so there's lots of different ways we could look at this, right? Almost wish I wasn't presenting this, that somebody else was presenting this. Because this says a lot about our, our movement, what the nature of our movement is. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You can ask a question. I don't know if I should ask it or not. Well. Would it, would it, would Bindelet, um have something to do with the Trump prediction? Okay. Well, indirectly. So, so part of the problem, I mean, we already know that the movement isn't studying God's word correctly. We also know that the attitude that exists in the movement that is been counterproductive to uh, unity, right? Right. Okay. So, so we have this message of Jotham. This message of Jotham, I say, this is my view, relates specifically to the light that has been given through me regarding chronology, regarding the prophetic periods, that then leads to uh, a confirmation of November 9th, 2019, and the prediction of July 18, 2020. But in that, can we see that Jotham's parable which is a reiteration of this history, is also a prediction that the thing that's being predicted with the destruction of Nashville has to do with this movement specifically. Nature of this movement, because this movement is in bad shape. And this, that is the movement, in a sense, has to fall. Right. So the movement, the movement, and we can see that FFA, right, in this this diagram above, right, FFA is being tested and up to July 18th. And then the remnant of FFA is being tested. So really this this whole line is a testing of FFA. And we have to figure out what that means. Because this is internal within this movement. FFA on at july 18th jeff shuts down so we could say um an another way of looking at it is jeff's ffa it's kind of bad right so you got jeff's ffa that's first being tested And Jeff sort of set that up himself, did he not? And we can see this specifically in relationship to November 9th. Jeff is saying Parminder and Tess's prediction regarding November 9th is going to fail. And that we are now, uh, our, it's our prediction, the July 18, 2020 prediction that's going to show the fate of this movement. It's gonna be this test on Mount Carmel, right? Parminder and his followers, they're the false priests, the priests of Baal, right? But he says July 18th is, is this Mount Carmel experience. But Jeff also understands that it could fail. So he knows this, that it could fail. 
But it doesn't matter whether it succeeds or fail, the prediction succeeds or fail. It's the end of FFA. Now, Jeff doesn't mercifully put FFA to death, though. That is, he doesn't just disband it and immediately um, you know, sell the properties. There's going to be this period of time. So he's going to step out of the picture and he's going to hand over the movement to, to Clayton and Bronwyn and uh, Larry Hine and um, uh, Guy, right? So you're going to have these other people now running FFA after July 18th, correct? Right. Okay, but they're going to reiterate they're, by December 6, 2020, they're going to end up um, reiterating everything that um, Parminder and Tess said regarding July 18th. They're going to end up rejecting the message. And that's going to be a formalized on the December 6, 2020 um, declaration, right? So that you're going to have the declaration. And and then we're going to have an empowerment of this, right? So they have this declaration. So I'm saying that that's the formalization there. And, and then what happens? So we're going to have um, all of the events that's going to that's going to empower this. What is going to empower this? So the second angel. So what we have to discern is what the period of darkness is. What events mark the formalization and the empowerment of this message that arrives on November 9th, 2019? It's going to be formalized. It's going to be empowered. And then on Ju July 18th, the second angel arrives. It's going to be formalized and empowered. And then a third angel arrives on December 25th, 2021. And so this parallels Millerite history. And so we have to figure out what that all means. And we have to get this from the story of Abimelech's downfall. But it, it's telling us something about that history from November 9th or November 15th, 2019. In relationship to, because here we can see that this is about Israel, both literal and spiritual Israel in in that huge line. But now it's it's applying to to this movement in this way. Because we can take this history and line it up like this. And and the interesting thing about this is there's a lot of parallels which we're going to have to look at that relate to this line then and that uh, those two periods of 1764 years. Right. So how those are broken up and uh, and what that means. So. I know I know a bit more about that history than most most of you is how that's divided up the 252 and how we would look at that symbolically. So. But we're going to have to go through it then so that we can all see it. Now, we can also see um, the persecution that happens too, right? So if you look at Abimelech's downfall, um, we have a persecution that occurs regarding the the messages that went before now there's there's actually persecution through both of these periods right so the messages that i was presenting um weren't looked upon very favorably by the majority within the movement jeff accepted these things he saw the validity of them but we have all kinds of forces 
uh, seeking to undermine all of this light that's been given to this movement. But Jeff will finally acknowledge um, that that this that this was happening, right? And he's going to do that in 2018. He's going to say, now I see why, you know, Theodore has been opposed so much because he has light that people don't want. Now, of course, he's going to turn very quickly from that statement that was in uh, uh, a class in, in one of the morning classes, I believe. But Jeff wasn't teaching it. I don't know who was. Uh, maybe I was. I don't remember. I just remember Jeff saying it. I don't think I was. I remember sitting down. I think somebody else was presenting. Um, but anyway, the point was Jeff saw why this opposition existed. And then he went down to Brazil. And when he came back, he was totally cold uh, to me personally and also to um, the July 18th prediction. He, and you could see he was in a turmoil over it, which he later said he was that he was worn out and tired, he was overworked, and um, you know, he had some, some reasons of why he was able to be manipulated by Parminder. But, um, but then we're gonna have, so once we get to November 9th, so even on November 9th, I'm invited to come down and study with Stephen and Odilio, but not really to do presentations. And it's more like I'm actually being brought down there to be questioned regarding the November 22nd, 2018 prediction. Because uh, that's mostly what they did with me is they, we had three studies on Sunday, so on November 10th, in which I was basically raked over the coals regarding that prediction and what it meant. But Jeff acknowledged it was it was solid. Just my conclusion was was off from what he saw but he didn't see anything wrong with the work that I'd done because he had said, we already understand these things that we're connecting um, uh, uh, Gerald Boehm with, with Trump. So, so there was no problem that he had with it. But in spite of that, all this time from November 9th to July 18th, um, we don't have me doing any presentations on Zoom in Arkansas. So through the School of the Prophets, I'm not doing any presentations. Um, lots of things are happening behind the scenes that shows that there's opposition to what I've been saying. But as we get closer to July 18th, some of that opposition disappears, but it immediately shows up again right after July 18th. And of course, Jeff is out of the way. And now we have um, a behind the scenes organized sort of effort to um, discredit everything that we have done with July 18th, right? So that's what's going to happen. But let's let's go to the scriptures and read some of this here again. So I know I've <clears throat> you know been talking about this. So so it says when Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Now, I'm saying these three years represents those three years from November 9th, 2019, to December 25th, 2021. But we're just saying that it's as a symbol. So it says when he had reigned uh, three years over Israel. So this would be at the end of that. But we're just saying that it represents that period. Um, so this downfall of Abimelech is actually occurring during those three years progressively. So we need to know what Abimelech represents because it is a message, not some person. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. So Shechem is going to represent um, who or what?
So you're asking who or what do the men of Shechem represent in this line? Yes. In Abimelech's downfall. So part of it is we need to know what Abimelech represents. Right. So, so we say it's a spirit or an attitude. And, and it's not really very different. The men of Shechem aren't really very different. We're going to have the Gaal, right? The bitterness, right? So the men of Shechem are going to be affected by this, this bitterness, this gag reflex, this um, part of our immune system. But they're the son of a servant, right? Ebed. And, and so the men of Shechem are going to put their confidence in this bitterness. So we can see that this relates to how um, the people at FFA respond to the failure of July 18th. Right? Right. Okay. So, so we can see that, that, that that's part of it. And um, now where exactly that occurs, I mean, we know that it, it definitely occurs after July 18th, but I would say it's actually occurring through that whole history. <clears throat> um, and then you have Zebul, who's the mayor of Shechem, right? And so we took this passage here where it says, who is Abimelech and who is Shechem, that we should serve him. So when it says, is not he the son of Jeroboam, that's referring to Abimelech. And Zebul, his officer, referring to Zebul being the mayor of Shechem. And the question is, should we serve, uh, serve them? Right? it says who is Shechem that we may serve him but it could be um it's not just Shechem it's, it's also Abimelech so to serve Abimelech and serve uh, Shechem so we have Gaal we have Shechem we have Abimelech and so we need to know what this means I should go to the scripture there so you can see it Yeah, so, yeah, July 18th is a test. This movement's being tested by July 18th. Yeah, so Angela says, I'd say July 18th wasn't a failure, but a test. It seemed like a failure to those desiring a sign of their special status as prophets. Okay, so we have, so here we have Z Zabul. We have the men of Shechem. And we have Gaal. And of course, we've gone through this before, trying to understand this. <clears throat> and of course, um, Gaal has this boast that he would just remove Abimelech. He says, were I in charge? Right? Increase thine, and he said to Abimelech, increase thine army and come out. And now Zabul, who's the ruler of the city, right, right because Abimelech's in the city of Shechem, when he, he hears the words of Gaal, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled, and he sent messengers unto Abimelech privately or secretly, saying, behold, Gaal, the son of Ebed, and his brethren, be come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. So, well, actually, I guess um, Abimelech's going to attack Shechem. Is that what it is? I'm getting mixed up. Because they got these liars in wait. Um, How does this go? I'm getting this wrong. Okay, so. Okay, the men of Shechem said, liars in wait for him, tops of the mountains. They robbed him of all that came along. So Shechem has been opposing Abimelech. 
Um, and Gaal, the son of Ebed, he's wanting to have a conflict with Abimelech. That's what's happening. And then, um, so yeah, so he says, um, Behold, Gahal, the son of Ebed, therefore, let me see. So when he says to Abimelech, increase thine army and come out. That just means come out to battle. Okay. Um, so they want these people to create an ambush. right? So he sent messengers unto Abimelech, saying, Behold, Gahal, the son of Ebed, and his brethren become to Shechem. And behold, they fortify the city against them. So we had trouble figuring out why Gaul is giving this message to Abimelech. Why he's, um, because he appears to be as supporting the men of Shechem. But he also is upset with Gaul saying this. So uh, I, we had trouble understanding this before. So his in his message to uh, um, let me see here his message to Abimelech he tells him about what Gaal is planning now therefore come up by night, night thou with thy people that is with thee and lie and wait in the field and it shall be that in the morning as soon as the sun is up thou shalt rise early and set upon the city and behold when he and the people that is with him come out against thee then thou mayest do to them as thou shalt find occasion. And Abimelech rose up and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. And Gaal the son of Ebed went out and stood in the entering of the gate of the city, and Abimelech rose up and the people that were with him from lying in wait. And when Gaal saw the people, he said to Zebul, uh, Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. So, so you have Gaal sees these people, and he says to Zebal, the mayor, um, I see people coming down from the tops of the mountains. Now, Zebal says, no, you're just seeing the shadows of the mountains as if they were men. Right? So you're you're mistaken. And Gaal spake again and said, see, there come people down by the middle of the land and another company come along by the plain of Minoanim, which um, was, uh, this is like a, a cloud passing over. So the plain of the shadow, but it also represents uh, magic, the soothsayer, right? The sorcerer an enchanter, figuratively. So the idea of that something's clouded over. It's the practice of magic. So it's the plane of the soothsayers, if we're going to just translate it literally. And then said Zabal unto him, where is now thy mouth wherewith thou saidst, who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Is not this the people that thou hast despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. And Gaal went out before the men of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt at Aruma, and Zebul thrust out Gaal and his brethren, that they should not dwell in Shechem. And it came to pass on the morrow that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. And he took the people and divided them into three companies, and laid wait in the field, and looked, and behold... The people were come forth out of the city, and he rose up against them and smote them. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city, and the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and he took the city and slew the people that were, was therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that they entered into a hold of the house of the god Bereth. So again, we have that uh, um, that uh, this, so this would be El Bereth, not Baal Bereth, but the covenant, right? It was told Abimelech that all the men of the Tower of Shechem were gathered together. 
And Abimelech got him to up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people that were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down the bough from the a bough from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, what ye have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. And all the people likewise cut down every man his bow and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died, also about a thousand men and women. And when Abimelech, and then went Abimelech to Thebes or Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it, but there was a strong tower within the city and thither flew all the men and women and all that of the city and shut it to them and got them up to the top of the tower. And Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head and all, and all to break his skull. So this millstone is going to represent Miller's rules, right? Then he called hastily unto the young man, his armor bearer, and he said unto him, draw thy sword and slay me, that men may say not of me, a woman slew him. And his young man thrust him through and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. And God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father in slaying his 70 brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did come, did God render upon their heads and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jeroboam. So, <clears throat> we've been through this story before so this is a battle of for lack of a better word methodology how to study the bible and we have a bunch of symbols we have these towers um, we have, of course, the different groups that are represented here. So those wouldn't be groups of people. These are messages. We have uh, attitudes and, and ideas that are also represented. So we th see things being done secretly. We see messages being sent in secret. We see... Um, strategizing right in in this case but we have some simple things that that endure so we have the prophecy of jotham's parable and we have a certain woman who drops a millstone on the head of abimelech now don't we have a lot of similarities to other stories that we've had in judges I think there's quite a few things that we see that are similar in Judges. So this millstone, can we connect it to Jaal and the spike? Hadn't considered it, but yes. Okay. So we can see some parallels. We can see that there's this symbolism that's being used that is illustrating the same history. But this... But this history is is expressed in uh, sometimes broader terms, sometimes in more narrow terms, sometimes more specifically. We're zooming in and we see that what's happened in the past is happening again. Right? We know that that this millstone represents Miller's rules that are going to you know, crush his skull, Abimelech's skull, break his skull. So we can with confidence know that the parable of Jotham will be fulfilled. And we're saying that the parable of Jotham is um, an understanding of the past that illustrates the present. So, you know, to work through these details, it's going to take some time again. You know, are we prepared really to do this? Because we, we have to get this work done because we're going to be presenting this at the camp meeting in the summer. And we need to understand it. And we need to understand it as a group, what it means, because we have to make decisions based upon what we understand here.
So it, it just seems to me the more we study this, the more obscure is maybe not the right word. Um, the more elements that come to bear that we have to sort through. And so it, it becomes a little more difficult to look at it. We, we have to keep lots of things in mind. So here's what I say, take it for what it's worth. But it seems to me that um, all of the work of FFA was not meant to build up a new organization, which we already understand. It never was. Right. It was to bring light, to give a message to the Adventist church. And we, we tend to take our focus up, off of that. That is, we're involved in this internal turmoil within this movement. I mean, this movement, in a sense, has been failing all, all along the way in accomplishing its task. Now, Jeff, initially, you know, if we look back at his history, he was not seeking to start a movement, I mean, per se, right? He was just studying the Bible, and he was a Seventh-day Adventist. And he noticed this parallel between Millerite history and, and our time because of what happened in 1989 and his understanding of Daniel chapter 11, verse 40 to 45. So he knew that that marked the beginning of the time of the end in which the Sunday law would occur and that we would repeat Millerite history. That the first and second angels messages have to, had to be repeat, repeated and we would fulfill the parable of the 10 virgins. It would be repeated to the very letter, but he didn't fully understand what all that meant. After 9-11, he comes to understand things a lot more clearly and as we continue to move through this movement we continue to notice more and more detail about millerite history and how it relates to our time but what happens in 2012 with parminder gives something to this movement that then becomes a a problem because we start to get time involved in the movement. And, and Parminder, of course, sets this up to some degree, but some degree it was already there, just not predicting time in the future. But we start to see these structures, right? We start to see that, that events that have been happening in our movement fit into a time structure. And at the same time, I'm presenting things relating to the past, the structure of the past. And we start to notice these structures in the present. And as Parminder uh, continues his assault upon the truth and wanting to take over this movement, his message and my message regarding time come into conflict with each other. But he puts in motion something that, that be unfolds in our movement. That is, we start to see time in a very detailed way that is unmistakably God's fingerprint. And so this time, this time that has been given us is something that is to show us something very specific about what our message is and um, what our work is. And it's to equip us to do that. And if the movement doesn't come to grips with that, if it continues on the course that it is, it will fall. And, and I think that the movement, in a sense, has already fallen, that a millstone has come down upon its head. We just, we're just seeing in right now sort of the aftermath of that. that so that's how I see this. 
But there is more to it as well. That is, we have another reform line coming. Because if that's 1798, in a sense, we have another time of the end. And that time of the end would more relate to the Sunday law itself. So there's something that we haven't seen, that we haven't understood about our history, that still is going to unfold. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Because we'll come back to this tomorrow. I think we're each going to need to take time to consider exactly what you've been saying for the last five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we are, are so grateful for the time that we have had, but we are also troubled by the things that we see, that we don't fully understand yet. And we want to reconcile these things with what you have already showed us. And so we ask for your help. Help us individually to study and think about these things, to seek you in prayer. Uh, we need um, you to instruct us. We pray for those searching for truth as they struggle with these ideas and concepts. We know, Lord, that um, we need your angels watching over us. We need your, your Holy Spirit speaking to the hearts of those around us and to the hearts of those in this movement. And um, we ask, Lord, that we can learn to trust in you in spite of what we see. Bring us together again to study your word. And watch over each one, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.